Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how we can add a pan or zoom effect to our video clips inside DaVinci Resolve 14. So here to get started, we have some raw footage taken by a drone of some nice mountain nature scenery. As you can see, the drone's camera was able to move a little bit, but we might want to do something like, let's say, zoom and pan to one of these mountain areas in the background. So the idea is whatever object you want to focus on inside of your video clip, it's going to be the same process either way. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually isolate the clip so we know exactly what we're working with. So I'll go to the start of this clip over here and get the end part of it. Now I'll drag this out here and we'll be working specifically with this clip. So with the clip selected, if you have the inspector opened up, it's going to give you a lot of these little keyframe symbols. If we check one of those, um, and then we go to a different area and change one of these properties, what's going to happen is it's going to create a keyframe for that property. So if I have keyframe set at the start for zoom, and a keyframe set at the end for zoom, and I increase the zoom, it's going to actually animate between those two keyframes automatically. So it's going to zoom in or zoom out, uh, depending on how the zoom is at the end versus the zoom at the beginning. So let's say that right around here, halfway through the clip, we want to be way zoomed in on this mountain peak in the background. So assuming that you've set the first keyframe somewhere in your video clip, if you go to another spot and you start changing the values, it's going to automatically create a keyframe. As you can see when I increase the zoom to 1.6, a keyframe is created there. So in order to focus on that peak, we're going to need both position and zoom keyframes. So I'm also going to change the position value here. If we actually make it negative, that's going to be basically moving everything in the video clip to the left, which is going to help us focus on the peak that we want to. Now note that if you go too far, you can't create video footage where there was no video footage. So you still have to keep in mind the edges of your actual video. But if I go over here, then we can start zooming in a bit more and focus on that peak. Also note that you don't have to zoom in X and Y at the same values, but usually you would. This little link here keeps the X and Y values for the zoom synchronized, which means that as you zoom in, the ratio of the screen still stays the same. So I'm going to also increase the position here, or actually decrease it, because I want the clip to move down so it looks like we're going up. And then I'll move the position up a bit more over here. So we can get as close to that peak as we want. So maybe if we decrease the position Y a little bit more here. Or I will actually take the video and focus on the peak. So now you can see at the first keyframe, it's still just the normal video footage. But as we get to that other keyframe, by the way, we can hit left and right on these keyframe indicators to just jump to keyframes. Um, it actually zooms in and changes the position. So let's just go ahead and play this back real quick. And you can see that we're able to kind of focus the video on the peak in the background uh, by manipulating the position and the zoom. Now, when you're actually taking video footage, if you do want to focus on something, I would highly recommend you have it more towards the center of the image. But nevertheless, this is how you can do it in post-production. So let's say that we also want to zoom out very fast here, rather than just kind of leave the position the same for the last few seconds of the video. We'll actually zoom in really fast. So to do that, what we would want to do is decrease the length of time between uh, this keyframe and the next one, so that whatever changes we make happen very quickly. So if I just drag this indicator just a little bit past the uh, second keyframe, somewhere around here, uh, and we lower this down, like let's say to 1, and let's say we change the values back to the original, it's going to zoom back out very, very fast. So let's just go ahead and play that here, and you'll see it zooms in kind of slow, but then zooms way out much faster than it zoomed in. Now, of course, you don't have to go purely between values of 1 and 0 and you zoom in or zoom out. You can also do something and take the position, move it to the right, keep it zoomed in a little bit, so this can be your third keyframe, and then you can keep that for the rest of the video. So let's play it back one more time. So zooming in, and then it zooms out a bit, but it's actually still zoomed in a little bit, and, and the position X is modified as well, even as it approaches the end of the video clip. 
Now, something important to keep in mind here is that if you start creating keyframes after you've cut up your clips, as you jump to separate clips, the keyframes are all going to be set. So if I have another video clip here, it's going to be 1.0 and 0 for the position and the zoom by default. But if these were the same clip and then I later cut them up, then the keyframes are going to stay as they were. But if I did something like create a keyframe right here, and then later I make a cut here, but I don't have any other keyframes after this, then whatever the values are at this keyframe, even if I've made another cut separating these into two separate clips, the values at this last keyframe before the cut is made are going to persist. So if you don't want these changes to be reflected in your other clips, uh, make sure you do your cutting first. But if you want the value to remain like that keyframe in the new clips as you adjust them, then you can do the keyframing before you make them. But aside from that, that's pretty much the gist of how you do zoom in and zoom out effects manually using keyframing inside of DaVinci Resolve 14. So I've been Chris, I hope you enjoyed this quick video tutorial, and I will see you guys in my future video content.